Are you tired of this world? Let's put our sleeping caps on and read a bedtime story. But to do that, we have to shut off the world. Shut it off. Don't even need to listen it. Take the cares of the world and put it to the side for now. And let's let our light become salt in front of the word. And let's begin to get ready for a bedtime story. We gotta turn the lights down. Gotta get ready to go in bed for a bedtime story. Oh my goodness, make sure you're tightly in. Let's get tucked in. Oh, let's get tucked in and ready <clears throat> for a bedtime story. <clears throat> ready? We are gonna get a bedtime story, yeah. Revelation chapter 10 verses 2 and 3 is all we're going to go over today in just a minute or two really is to be super short. And he had in his hand a little book open and he set his right foot upon the sea and his left foot on the earth. His right foot because with his left hand he's holding Hashem. The messengers of God hold Hashem by their left hand because we are positioned at his right side. So to catch his right side, we use our left hand. His right foot upon the sea, so that foot extending out from heaven goes on to the earthly portion. So his right foot, not directly attached to God, comes into the sea. The sea of forgetfulness. Remember, there'll be no more ocean anymore after all this is said and done. Yahweh's getting rid of the ocean. So why did this messenger put his foot in the ocean if the ocean's gonna get removed? And <laughs> oh, I'm gonna get my really messy here. And um, congratulations, this is probably not any better. Anyway, so he puts his, uh, and yeah, I had to put it farther away so I could read. Thanks for noticing. <laughs> here, here's your moment of zen. Okay. His left foot on the earth. The earth is going to remain. Just be taken over by the visual rulership of King Jesus. Because right now he is actually ruling from the courtroom of heaven. He's in charge already. Currently. He doesn't have his throne in Jerusalem yet on earth. Doesn't mean he's not already king. He's not just present physically in a more bodily form in this territory. He's still ruling it fully in charge. Start in your mind dressing yourself to enter the throne room. It's the courtroom. Jesus is your lawyer, but you get to speak for yourself. You get a turn anytime you want. Back to the verses. <laughs> so his, his right foot on the sea. Right foot on the sea. The sea's going to go away. So he's only touching his toes in it, kind of. He's like, oh, I'm here. i got to be here for a minute and give you this message. Oh, my goodness. The water's cold. Right? <laughs> I bet that didn't happen. Okay. And verse 3, though. There's so many ways that this verse mandates us to be an echo 
and not a voice. And there's a very popular thing in Christianity, be a voice, not an echo. They're thinking, don't be part of this world, get out amongst the heathen, from them, I mean, get out, be your own individual voice for the true God. But really, as much as the people following Lucifer echo Lucifer, people following King Jesus have to echo King Jesus. And when he speaks out and his word isn't supposed to return to him void, it's because he's getting back his own word. You're merely, merely to echo it in response that you're in on the vibe. You're in on the action. You're in cahoots. You get the inside joke. Once you create it as your reality that you're in on it, then your body will conform as much as your brain will get out of the way. I'm working on that myself. If I could prove it to you physically, I will. Uh, there's another verse in scripture where people who are sick and get healed <coughs> by King Jesus, they're supposed to go to the doctor and get verified. But countless case after case, people don't. So we don't have the science to back up miracles. If you've gone to the doctor after being cured from something harsh, I hope you had the backbone to tell the doctor why you're fixed. Otherwise, it meant nothing. That was your opportunity there with the doctor. To remind the doctor, they ain't everything. <laughs> I think I will. Side aggression I'm working out in this video. <clears throat> Excuse me. He's doing his best. He really is. <laughs> Sorry. Here in verse 3, there's so many ways to, to describe an echo. We want to be an echo of Hashem. We're going to dig into that now. So you get it. So it'll be um, Revelation 10 and 3. Revelation 10 and 3, Revelation 10 and 3. That's your theme music while we pass to the next scene. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> In verse 3. All the different ways he cried with a voice. Crying is an utterance. Voice is a way to describe an utterance. Or like a lion roars, that's another way to describe an utterance. Thunders, even though it's a noun, is a way to describe an utterance. How do they cry? Like a raven. Like a raven. But the voice is like a lion roar? So he cried like his expression was like a raven. But his voice is loud, musical, utterance, brought forth light. Like a lion on earth. Who's the lion? Da, 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 da. Okay. <laughs> Let's look up lion while I'm here. Now I want to go to the roar earth. Let's do Roarth first. We'll go back to who's doing the roaring. Besides the messenger. To so really describe what's this messenger all about. Bellow. Like horned cattle, but also like a lion. Isn't Jesus like our beast of burden? Who, who out there, you raise cattle? Do you know what they sound like when they're angry? Or during, I'm sure probably when they're the loudest is probably during rutting or whatever you call the mating season. Oh my. I don't want to know why did I bring that up. I'm just saying this, <laughs> this messenger is super loud. We got to get how powerful loud, whatever angle you need to think about it. It's louder than that. This messenger is louder than that. Why is he so loud? Thunders. Wasn't there a lady in the New Testament? She wanted her sons of thunder to be at the right hand of Jesus or something like that. Sons of thunder. Sons of roaring. Sons of 
thunder to roar like a lion, trap Judah. Seven of them, though. That's nice. How many times is seven in the book of Revelation? He's echoing the lion, a brave and mighty hero. Be an echo of the lion. Even when you're using your own unique way to get the message across. Why? Because language changes. But we still have to get the point across. What are we trying to tell people? The Lord is my shepherd. What? Oh, the Bible could be super short. He can't. He started cultivating people after the fall. Because after the fall, we had the knowledge of evil, and ba bow, there's everybody. We went to. Hades, practically, because we learned about wickedness. And in our wickedness, you need a moment of zen right now, because you're not going to handle this. You're not going to handle this. <laughs> Think of it in that <clears throat> we were cast down out of the Garden of Eden, Eden into this realm. There's a passage in the book of Revelation. There's the priest that goes, or the messenger. He's acting like a priest. He's dressed like a priest. He fills the incense bowl, and he dips it into where the fire of the altar is kept, and he flings it on the chains down to earth. That's kind of how, like, we fell out of the kingdom of heaven. Now to get back in the kingdom of heaven, just go to King Jesus and do what he tells you to do. Just like Mother Mary told the servants to change the water pots out to the new wine. I don't have to call out a specific sin because it's the point is moot. Stop splitting hairs. Whose kingdom would you like to be in? You exist forever and ever and ever. My name's Adrian. Nice to meet you. I'm going to be Adrian the same as Hashem is I am. I am. I am now. I am. Not that I replace him. That is impossible. But I'm a tiny pebble cut from the cornerstone. He's going to return to me this pebble, and he's going to put my new name on it. That's in the book of Revelation. We all got our... Uh, appointed name, which we are renamed after Hashem. His name is our name, and our name is his name. It's chiseled out of him, and we get a portion of what he is. He names us on that little piece of rock that he's going to hand to each and every one of us. It comes from him. It is him. It's a part of him that he is placed in an individual cell within his body, and he named himself. You're a little nuclei and an atom in a... In a and a part of Shashem. But you're behaving like a cancer. <laughs> and the blood cells are coming to attack. And they don't know what they're attacking because they just know, red alert, red alert, red alert. So the body's attacking itself. Stop, drop, and roll! The Torah out and study it again. Thank you! And that's mine today. That's all you got. I don't know if this is recorded upside down now or what, but <laughs> I flung this camera around. Everything's all over the place. Um... Bye. Chew on that a minute.